the people of Myanmar say they're hopeful for change now that the country's opposition has won a majority in parliament. Bruce Harrison joins me live in the studio. Now, Bruce, uh, this, this victory ends decades of military rule in Myanmar and, and validates Aung San Suu Kyi's uh, immense struggle for freedom there. Hello, Kanyang. The military had sole control of Myanmar for 50 years, and it wasn't until 2011 that President Thein Sein took over and economic and democratic reforms uh, began taking shape. Uh, now that Suu Kyi's National Liberation for Democracy Party is taking control, there's a much better chance those reforms take root over the long term. And with its majority in parliament, the NLD can elect the country's next president as well. The only other time Myanmar held a national election was in 1990. Suu Kyi's NLD was widely considered to have won that election, but military rulers threw out the results and placed Suu Kyi and many of her colleagues under arrest. Now, 25 years later, Aung San Suu Kyi finally has a seat in parliament, but the constitution there bans her from being the next president. Why is that? The constitution was written by the military, and it bans anyone with foreign family members from becoming president. Suu Kyi's late husband was British, and her children hold British passports. On top of that, her party can't amend the constitution because it includes an effective measure to prevent just that. When the ruling party, uh, rather the military, wrote the constitution, it gave itself 25% of seats in parliament. So even with a majority, Suu Kyi's NLD doesn't have the power to push through any amendments. Suu Kyi's known that all along, and she's revered by her party. So the NLD is likely going to put forth a candidate the party agrees on. She indicated they'll choose a civilian, saying that's appropriate. Uh, a top NLD leader said Suu Kyi could become someone like Sonia Gandhi. Gandhi's the widow of late Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. Ms. Gandhi's led the Congress party, and with that authority, she dominated the government of former Prime Minister Mohammed Gandhi uh, Singh. Rather. Right, uh, Bruce, uh, there's been concerns that the, uh, the elections this time around weren't as free and fair as uh, promoted. What is the, the view of the world and the rest of the world on the process of this election? Well, ahead of the elections, a U.N. investigator uh, questioned their legitimacy because dozens of candidates had been disqualified and hundreds of thousands of people denied voting rights. That investigator also said restrictions under military rule could put elections at risk. He was talking about restrictions on freedom of expression, assembly, and association, as well as excessive force against protesters, things the country has seen for sure under the military. But the U.S. and many other Western countries are praising Myanmar President Thein Sein. U.S. President Barack Obama reportedly called and commended him for holding free and fair elections. Let's talk about the immediate period right after the elections. What needs to happen in order for a smooth transition to take place in that country? Mm -hmm. For that to happen, the military is going to have to accept the results of this election. And so far, it looks like they're willing to do that. Uh, they've agreed to talk to Aung San Suu Kyi about transitioning power. The army is still a formidable force in Myanmar's government, and the commander-in-chief nominates heads of uh, three powerful budget-heavy ministries. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has cautioned that what happens next is key to Myanmar's future. He said a peaceful post-election period is crucial for stability and maintaining the confidence of the people and the credibility of the elections. Well, so many people have put their faith in Aung San Suu Kyi, and now she finally has the chance to lead. Yeah, one example of that is uh, ethnic minorities in Myanmar. They really hope that now that the NLD is going to take over, it will quell some of the racial violence that has been persistent in that country. Right. Uh, this is uh, this must be a very a celebration of of a long kind in Myanmar because uh, this uh, democracy comes after a long 53 years. A long, um, you know, iron-fisted military rule, and it, everyone's just watching to see what happens next and and how that transition takes place. Right. We will all keep. Keep an eye on that country. All right, Bruce, thank you so much for today. We will see you on Monday. Thanks, Kanye. I'll see you then.